Hello, I'm Dr. Brian Fraser, and in this video I'll be showing how to use Git from inside of Eclipse to create a new repo on GitHub. So I've created a simple Java project. Uh, it contains two Java files uh, shown here. The actual contents of my repository are not very important to this demo, uh, so if you're using a different language inside of Eclipse, that's fine too. So what have I got? I've got these two files, a main class, which has a main function, which calls my display greeting method, and I'm also going to be instantiating the sales data object, which is here from my sales data class, so it just can display. Okay, so once I've got this, let's just prove this works. I'm going to go control F11, and it runs, and that's all I needed. Console output looks good. Okay, so let's go through and try and get this going. What have I got? I've got this running on a Windows 10, in my case a virtual machine, and I have Git for Windows installed. I've got a GitHub account already, and we'll see how to integrate with that in a minute. So let's get going. First thing I want to do is I'm going to create a local repository on my PC. So I'm going to right click on my project, and I'm going to say sh team and share project. So right click my project, team, share project. Now from here, uh, it might look a little confusing, but basically I'm going to create a local repository. Since this is a brand new project, we're assuming that there is no existing GitHub project for it. So I'm going to create here a new repository locally. And I'm going to call this one local um, sales tool. I put local in it just to, to make it clear it's my local system as opposed to my remote, but we'll see how this all works out. And I think all the other defaults are fine, so I'm going to click finish. Okay, so now that's happened. The only noticeable change maybe is that my file's closed. That's because when I created the repository, Eclipse moved my project into the repository, which is in a different location. So I'm going to reopen my files here. Um, I think it's showing me, yeah, anyway, we can ignore that green highlighting. What I want to now see is sort of what is my view of my project, and I could do that, I could drop to a command line and see, but Git inside of Eclipse has a number of features that we can use, so this is sort of the, the Eclipse support for Git. So the first thing I need to do is I'm going to go and I'm going to enable support. So under Perspective, and then Customize Perspective, so Window, Perspective, Customize Perspective, I would want to enable this git, but I can't. It says, git cannot be made visible because all of its children are unavailable, are in an unavailable action set. So what that really means is you haven't turned on git yet. And we can do that from here. You go to action set availability. And I'm going to turn on Git. I'm also going to turn on Git navigation actions just for fun. And we can see if I click in Git, these are all the things that are going to be added to the menu bar. And here's a toolbar that's going to come up, a Git toolbar that I'm going to be using. So I'm going to say oh, apply. And we can see up here at the top, it has actually shown me the Git toolbar now. So push all the way through these ones. These are all of the icons that relate to accessing things with Git. Okay, so that's great. It's been enabled. I've now got a Git menu, so that's fine. Um, but let's bring up some views here to actually see what's going on. So I'm going to go to Window, Show Perspective, and then down to Other. So in here, let me just roll these up to show you where we're starting. In here, I want to go under Git, and I can look at any of these views I like, but the ones I really want to look at are Repositories and staging. Repositories being the big one, staging is going to be useful when we try to commit. And the last one is under team history. So I'm holding control as I'm clicking on each of these different views to, to multi-select it. So after I've got all of those, get repositories, get staging, and history, I'm going to click open, and all of those views open up for me. So the one that I want to focus on at the beginning with is underneath my package explorer, this get repositories. Let's expand that. So this is going to show me kind of what I've got configured. At the moment, there's no remotes because we're just working on a local system. Um, and I can look at branches, and I don't even have any branches yet. So I haven't done any commits. It doesn't know anything going on. So I could access this a number of ways. I want to start doing a commit. So I'm going to go to, I could go to git and then commit. 
I could go to the menu and click on commit or as I'll often do I'll right click on my project I'll go down to team and anytime team is often referring to your source code control and I'll say here commit so any one of those would be perfectly fine they're just identical ex executing the same command okay so from here I want to understand how git's going to work so the unstaged changes are the files that have not yet been effectively added to this uh, commit that I'm going to make and so these are all the files that are created in my project by default some of them like this one and the main are the files that I actually created that I really want in my project others like the preferences or the project file these are all the ones that the uh, editor or the IDE has provided for me so I want all of them, they're all good files, people I want to be able to just check out my whole Eclipse project and begin to working with it. So I'm going to add them all to the staged section down here, and then I'll give it uh, some sort of description. Um, you have to provide some description, you can just put a period if you really wanted to, but convention is to provide a meaningful message. So I'm going to put in here, initial commit of project. Um, be aware that the information that you're providing here is going to be publicly available if the GitHub project is publicly available. So make sure it's not giving away your super secret private email. I could say commit and push now, but it turns out that's going to be slightly problematic. So I'm just going to start by committing to the local system. So I've committed to local, and we can see here now under local, I can expand that I have a master branch. Master is representing the sort of the main line of my project. Um, in some cases, you'll be committing straight to master. In others, as we'll cover in a later video, you'll be committing to a, a branch and then merging back to master. But master is kind of like the main where we're at. And when we see head, head means the latest. So he master head is the latest and greatest. Okay, so now we've we've committed that. We see that there are no unstaged changes, uh, no staged changes. Everything's been committed. Let's have a look at this inside of my history. So I'm going to right-click on my repo, and I'm going to go to Show in History. So right-click the repo, Show in History. It brings up my history list, and it shows here I've got this one only one commit. On the right-hand side, it's telling me these are all the different uh, files that were actually committed. So that's looking pretty good. So I've now committed it to my local. So now what? Now I want to push it to GitHub. Well, I don't yet have a repository created on GitHub. I can't create, to my knowledge, a repository through Eclipse for, uh, Git for Eclipse. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to load up my uh, GitHub. So I've already got it in a web browser logged in. And I want to now create a new repository. So I'm going to give it a name here. I'm going to call this one Sales Tool 2018. Um, and that's fine. Now, the one important thing is do you want to be public or private? Uh, mine's public is fine. Do not select this. Do not initialize with a readme, which I just kind of mistakenly clicked on. So don't initialize it with a readme file. If you do, you'll get an initial commit, which allows you to clone the repository. But we're not wanting to clone it. We're wanting to push to it. We want to initially push to an empty repository. So I want to leave that blank. So don't add anything else. I'll create the repository. And from here, the one thing I really care about is this HTTPS such and such dot git. That's going to tell me how I can uh, interact with it via um, Eclipse here. Okay, so if I did try and do a git, let me just pretend I'm not really gonna do this but if I went here and I want to do a push current branch I could do a push up but I think if I did this just a straight push now configuring all this information it's very often going to give me a problem in terms of the references so I'm gonna not do that right now I'm going to first go and set up some references so under remotes I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna say create remote the origin is the default and classic name for the remote, meaning your remote server. And I'm going to configure push to start with. I'll configure fetch in a moment. I do kind of want to configure both. Uh, please provide at least one URI. So here it is. And it automatically pulled in this data from my copy buffer. So when I clicked on change, it automatically pulled in all this data from my copy buffer. And it's already got my username and password because I've saved it from before. So you just type in your username and password for GitHub. 
And now I'll save that here. I want to now add in the references. I could add them one at a time here, putting them in. But instead, I want to just use the advanced, because it actually turns out to be simpler. And these mappings are going to say how I want my local things, like my master, to map to the remote. So the source reference, I'm going to say master, which is my branch, is going to map to ref's head master. So it's the same on both, which is exactly what I want. I want to be working on master. And then I have to click on add spec, because it hasn't been added yet, and now it's down here. I'm going to say save specification and origin configuration, and I'm going to finish. So now it's added that in here, and I'm going to say save. I could have pushed from there, but that's fine. While I'm here, I'm going to configure the other one too. I'm going to configure a pull. So that was the up arrow is a push, the down arrow is a fetch. So I'm going to right click on fetch, let's go back to configure, and I haven't got that yet here. So I'm going to go and uh, I want to go to advanced. I want to map. Well, it doesn't have anything here yet because I haven't actually done it. I haven't connected yet, I think. So let's just leave that. Uh, cancel that. And I'm going to start by doing a push. Push the current. It's thinking down here, pushing to local sales system. And it says, OK, master, my master was pushed to master on the remote. And it's saying, hey, it was a new branch. Normally, you won't get a new branch for master after this commit. But on the first one, we're creating the master. So this is sort of the initial drop in. Let's go back to my web browser. I'm going to refresh the page with F5. And here we see that now I have this initial commit of my project. And if I browse through here, I can see that the code is actually all that code I was expecting. OK, so that was my push. Um, note that if you tried to push and it told you it was unable to do it because it was no a non-fast forward merge. What that means is a fast forward merge is when there is nothing newer on the other system. And you maybe you're, you're pushing. You've got some new stuff that the remote system doesn't have. And critically, the remote system doesn't have something that you do not. So if the remote system had something you don't, you can't just push because you'd be obliterating it. So in the case of if you get a non-fast forward merge error, it means that the remote system has something you do not. What you could do in this one case is tell it you want to do a force push. So when you're doing your, your push, there's a box there for force. If you click it in this one case, it'll obliterate whatever's currently on the server and put yours up. You never really want to do a force push otherwise, unless you really know what you're doing. OK, so now we've got that all uh, uploaded. Um, let's go through the process of making a change and just seeing how we do that again. So I'm going to go back here to my main. I'm going to add in another S out. Control space, this is an autocomplete for system.out. And uh, woot, it pushed. I'll save that. Let me run it. And it worked. Fantastic. And now I want to push this up. So I could go back here to my git staging, and I could trigger it from here. And I could say add and so forth. Or I'm going to come back over to somewhere else just to show what I'm doing. And let's do it a different way. I'm going to say here, I'm going to click on commit. Again, they're all doing the same thing. It just automatically added the file down here to staging. And now I'm going to say added new output message. And again, I'm just going to split it up. I might often click a commit and push um, when I wanted to push it up. But I'm going to click commit first. Let's have a look at it in the history. So we can see here in the history, I now have this added new output message. And I want to push that up. And so I'm going to go here, and I'm going to say push current branch. We can see that it's pushing. It told me that it worked. And again, if it tells me it couldn't through a force push, or it couldn't because it's a non-fast forward, it means I probably need to do a fetch merge first. So we go back over here, refresh the page, and we can see we now have my output. So I'm able to make changes and push them up. To, or second to last thing I want to show is to configure the pull. So if here, if I just did a pull now, let me try that. Pull changes from upstream. It says nothing to fetch. That doesn't mean that there's nothing new. It means that it doesn't know of anything to fetch. It hasn't got any references. So let me come in here and see. It's got some references for the head. Anyway, let's come into here. And I'm going to say I'm going to configure my fetch. And I want to say advanced. 
And now it's got that because I've already done my pushes up. It knows about master. So I'm going to say master here. And it's going to kind of the destination of remotes. So I'm going to say add. And I think that all the rest of the defaults are fine. So I'm going to say save. And I'm going to do a save. And I could have saved and fetched at the same time, but that's good. And I'm going to try a pull. So now when I try a pull, it actually functioned. But it says nothing to update. Everything's already up to date. So that's great. If somebody does make a change to my my repo online, I would now be able to pull it down. So that's the second half to kind of complete the process, the mapping of push and pull. And now finally, I want to show you what about the actual files I'm dealing with. Eclipse by default shows me the package explorer. And that's a bit of a sanitized view as to what I've actually got. It's hiding a bunch of files for me. So if I want to go and see those, I'm going to right click on, for example, my package. And I'm going to say here, show in and then Navigator. And that brings up my Navigator panel here. So for example, the bin folder, which contains my .class files, the compiled Java files, is not shown in the Package Explorer, because I never really want to look at them usually. Other things here, we see the .class uh, git ignore and the project file. Git ignore is probably the only one you're going to really want to edit, in some cases. We can see that it's telling Git to ignore the bin folder. So everything in the bin gets ignored, it never gets put into Git. And that's great because we don't want to try and merge two compiled executables. That would be ridiculous. Uh, likewise, you might have some other documents that don't get merged. Uh, maybe the sort of output capture or a local log, maybe those things don't get into Git. So in which case, you might want to edit the Git ignore to put that in here. Uh, have a look online for more resources to find out what to actually edit here. But generally, I'm going to want to be back here in the Package Explorer. OK, that's all I have to show for the uh, demo here on doing a uh, committing a project into a GitHub new GitHub repository. Have a look at other videos in this sequence for how to import a project from GitHub into your local PC, as well as doing some other operations to manage that in sort of your development workflow. Um, thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed the video, uh, please have a look for my Patreon link uh, if you want to support future videos. Thank you very much.